I will freely admit that this year I've visited some pretty amazing car collections, but today, today is different. Uh, hello one and all, and welcome to Scene Through Glass. Welcome to the Wilson Collection in Florida. I could spend six days in here with a BBC documentary crew and still not, I mean, I just wouldn't be able to summarise everything that's going on. But anyway, luckily, the owner of the collection, Larry Wilson, has agreed to give me a walking tour, talking me through each and every car. So this is not going to be a quick video, but I don't think it matters. So sit back, make yourself a tea or coffee, get some popcorn, and enjoy what I truly believe is potentially the rarest car collection in the world. We have uh, four major rooms in the collection. This room houses German cars on one side, British on the other. We have another room for American cars, another room for Italian cars, and then a workshop. Okay, nice. And so we'll start with the German cars. And the Mercedes, this is a 6.3 Mercedes, which is was the fastest four-door sedan in its era. It's uh, got a the V8 engine out of the 6.3 stretch limousine, the Adenauer limousine in a 300 body. And this is a, a 72 280 SE. This is the last of the hand-built Mercedes. This is a 1957 190 SL, which was built by Mercedes from 55 to 63, this model. And the interesting thing about it is the engine was designed by Ferdinand Porsche in 1924, when he worked for Mercedes. And they pulled out the blueprints when they started to build this car because they needed a four-cylinder engine, and they thought that was appropriate. And so they put it in production for the 55 models mm -hmm. and stayed in production until 63. This is an Audi R8. And um, what I like about this car, it's got a six-speed manual gated transmission, which they now no longer make because they can't pass the emissions and, and fuel mileage requirements with the, with the manual because a computer shifts so much better than a, mm -hmm. more efficiently than a human. The vast majority of the cars in the collection are 1967 or prior because 1968 was the first year that the American government for cars sold in America put in restrictions about smog and other things. Mm -hmm. But we have no cars from 1974 to 1992 because 1974 was the first year the U.S. government dictated to car manufacturers a great deal of things about the car in terms of specifications, the fuel emissions, the safety requirements of five mile an hour bumpers. So they had to have the rubber bumpers. So it, in my opinion, it took almost 20 years for the car manufacturers, Porsche and others, to be able to catch up with all the safety and emissions requirements and really focus on performance again. And then these are all Porsches. This is, these are all 911s along this road. This is a GT3. This is a 1994 RSR. And we, we're racing it. We're converting it back to a street car because the racing for these cars is gone away sure. and so it's in a period which it's not really old enough to be a vintage racer but it's too new to be against the, the modern water water cool cars. This is a, a 73 RSR uh, Porsche in which we raced for many many years over 20 years. We're now in the process of conver converting it back to street use. It's just too valuable to race and I enjoy driving it on the street so we're, we're finishing up the street conversion to it. It's amazing, isn't it, how value has sort of changed the car, seen the car market so much. It know? has, yeah. A race car now, Makes, too valuable to race. But anyway. It is. <laughs> so, go on. This is a 73 RS, the street version of this car, which is the race car. And it's a fab fabulous car. Enjoy driving that. This is one of 33 uh, 72 ST, 911 ST Porsches. This particular car, these were primarily for racing before the RSR. Um, and uh, and rallying. This happens to be a rally car, and uh, it's got all the rally equipment in it. This is a car we built out of a 67 911 Targa, and I, I love the Porsche 550 Spiders. You'll see one here, and I thought this, the Porsche should have built a 911 Spider. They didn't, so we did, and so the the lids, doors are fiberglass and done as a 911R would have been, it, it was done, with very lightweight components and a hopped up two liter engine and we built a, a fiberglass dash that rolls over like the Spider, Spider type seats and doors, 
um, no do outside door handles, lightweight lids, and so it's our view of a 67 version of the 55 550 Spider. I can't let you skip past uh, the thing hanging above Up here, it. <laughs> yes. This is a 1967 um, 910. The, the 910 was a limited production. They built about 30 some of them. A uh, race car. Uh, it was a follow on to the 906 in 66. And uh, this car raced in Europe. It was a factory race car originally. And it was sold to some customers. And I, I found it in California and brought it back. And, its handling is outstanding, so it's a very well balanced car. And arguably very good looking as well, yeah. you know, yes. in my opinion. <laughs> in my, my opinion. A 550 Spider that uh, was originally sold in, in France, and um, we were able to, it went to Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and I was able to buy it from the, from the owner there. And, but it needed a major restoration, so we took it completely apart, rebuilt the engine, rebuilt all, all aspects of it. Uh, back to factory original uh, components. This is a, a 1958 Porsche Speedster Carrera. This is a 59 GSGT, which was the, an A-series car, but Porsche stopped building A-series cars in 58. But they built some of these for racing in America and had the 4-cam engine, only this is a 2-liter, 180-horsepower engine. This is our version of the 804 Grand Prix race car that Dan Gurney and others drove in 1962 for Porsche, the only year Porsche participated in Grand Prix, and they won one Grand Prix, Dan Gurney won the French Grand Prix, they came close to winning at Nürburgring but had a problem. Um, but it was the only time Porsche participated in Grand Prix, and the, the original car looked exactly like this, we, we spent close to eight years building this car to get it very specific. And there were three of them built for racing, which are in museums, and I've seen two of the three, and one of them's in a private collection. And then a fourth one is in the Porsche Museum that was built after the race season, to, to, so Porsche would have one to display in, in, at their factory. This is a 53 uh, C-type Jaguar. This, this car it was quick, but this car would do 185 down the Mulsanne Strait, the D-Jaguar. And the difference was, it was the first car designed in a wind tunnel. And so we and Lyons had some British aviation engineers design what's the most wind efficient design that we can have in a wind tunnel. The other thing that's unique about this car, it, it's a monocoque, doesn't have a frame. It was the first race car. It was a monocoque without a frame, body on frame. And we'll continue on down here with some additional Jaguars. This is a 1961 Mark II Jaguar. Being from London, you may know this, but it was the bank robber's I was special. Say, it's a, it's a proper it, gangster, in the 60s because the police color, yeah. didn't have cars fast enough. Mm. Like they finally got a budget to be able to buy some and be able to, to catch, try and the catch bank people. Robbers. Yeah. This is a uh, 67 Brava BT29. Uh, Formula 2 car, and uh, it raced in Europe and then was shipped here to West Palm Beach and sold here and raced in America and I bought it maybe 20 years ago and I, I raced it a good bit and it's, it's won a lot of races. Yeah, it's amazing. Very, very yeah. quick. Now this actually, I have a soft spot for this because I've always loved the hot Austin Healey shape. I don't know what it is. And yep. This one well, this special. is an unusual Austin Healey. This is a 100S, which is built in 1955. Um, they, only they only built 50 of them, Wow! and the S um, stood for Sebring, and they brought three of them to, to the dealer here in West Palm Beach and took them over to the Sebring race, and some others also came to the Sebring, not this model, but this model, the S, is the first production car with four-wheel disc brakes, mm -hmm. and the body's all aluminum, so very lightweight, so everything is aluminum on the body, and Harry Westlake, a brilliant designer in the UK designed, redesigned the head for the Austin Healey four-cylinder engine at 55. And so the head makes a big difference. It's got very large Weber carburetors, carburetors on the opposite side of what they're normally on, and an aluminum head with very big valves and ports. And this particular engine puts out um, 196 horsepower. Yeah. 
And the stock also in Healy Four at that time put out ninety horsepower. Okay, it's so a, it's quite it's, a substantial difference. It's it's a it's a, a race engine, very powerful. And so are they are they fun to drive? To have, like what is the character? It's a ball to drive. Yeah. Does it feel overpowered at all? Or no, if you want to drive it, it, you can drive it. Later. <laughs> I'm not going to turn that off like that, but I yeah. think it's a stunning, yeah, stunning yeah. looking thing. Yeah, you have to drive it. This yeah. room. Yeah. Is, this is my favorite room. It's Italian cars, <laughs> except for we have one Datsun 240Z. Okay, hey, we'll, so we have we'll a, one Japanese <laughs> car. But we'll start down here. These are all Alphas. Um, this is an Alpha Duetta, uh, the boat tail Alpha. This is a GT, uh, 67 GTA. We have an Alpha TZ here. It's in the We'll see that in the back. It's being worked on now. Okay. But that's the front lid for it. But, uh, Beautiful. The TZ was built in 64. They, they made about 103 of them. This is an Alpha Sprint 1962 Veloce. This is a car we're restoring. It's a, a 1959 Alfa Romeo Zagato, wow. a special car that Zagato bought it, designed the body for. Wow. And so that's next time you come, it should yeah, be Yeah, for sure, please. <laughs> this is a 1957 Alfa Romeo Giulietta Spider Veloce, um, which is a wonderful little car. There are not many of them left, but uh, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful driving car. These are some bucks for some bodies we built. Uh, this is for the Alpha Zagato. Okay. Uh, we, we're built, we have to build the body on it because it was so de destroyed. This is a Ferrari buck for that California Spider, which I bought in Montana about 10 years ago and it had been left outside, it had been a race car left outside, deteriorated. We had to basically build up 80% of the body over. So the buck, you sourced the buck? We sourced the buck. Oh, wow. That's yeah. an original from? Pen, yeah, from Pen and Farina. Wow. Okay, that's pretty amazing. And these are two Ferraris uh, we're waiting to restore. They're in the queue. Uh, a bon 56 Bondi Isle and a 58 206S. And so, Next time you come, hopefully yeah. they'll be done. Yeah, as I said, this is my room, so uh, I'm super excited but intrigued by everything under covers. And this is 1963 um, California Spider. And, you know, I, I'm not sure which is the prettiest sports cover built, either this or the A6 GCS Maserati over here. I think are the two best looking sports cars. For sure, and I think yeah. maybe this is heralded more into the popular culture and things. Yes, it's, um, they got the rear quarter panel really right on this, so, and that's so hard to do. Yeah, it just adds that extra sort of sophistication but yep. uh, style to it, and yeah, unbelievable to see. So how did you come by this, for example? Because I found, I, somebody who knew me, knew I liked okay. collecting cars, <laughs> told me about this one that was totally decrepit and up on a ranch in Montana. Yeah. And, so you're so, I, I, I can imagine you're maybe need to be rescued, yeah, so I did. You knew, like, people know that you, <laughs> you're yeah. going to want to buy these kind of things. And this is a 67 Ferrari Formula One. And uh, we actually built this car. There none survived the season. Okay. And a couple of drivers didn't survive the oh, season. I was going to say, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, it's that time of the... But it's a lot of fun. Yeah, and yeah. so we got the same horsepower, the same liter, three liter engine as the original engine. Um, and the body work and aluminum, everything is as original. Mm -hmm. And I take it to the track and, and run it a good bit just for fun. And how, I mean, something like this, how'd you go about recreating something like that? Because we got a lot of photographs and blew them up. We got models and put them in CAD CAM and then blew them like 1 18th wow. models 18 times to get dimensions. Wow. And uh, then built molds and, and uh, did a lot of a lot of research. Yeah, I can imagine something like that must have taken, taken a while, but what an incredible thing to have just lying yeah. around and to be able to experience. Now this, for me coming here, being teased about what you had was the thing that kind of blew me away, because yeah. um, I love the whole idea about this. So yeah, talk to me through this one. Yeah, this one, um, originally, um, Luigi Canetti, whose son is a friend of mine who lives in this area, um, was the importer of Ferraris to the US, and he's actually the one that convinced Ferrari to build streetcars because he had worked with Maserati in the 30s and raced for Maserati and was actually in America for the Indianapolis 500 in Maserati in 1940 when the war broke out and decided to stay in America, moved to New York. And after the war, he went to Ferrari and told him that, I understand you're gonna start building race cars and you'll be making a mistake if you do that because Maserati Brothers have done that and they barely can beat the payroll and sure. have to only build a customer car when they've only built 20 customer cars 
today when they needed to have money to be able to, to pay the bank their loan to be able to keep in business. And he said, what I would like for you to do is build for every race car, build one street car, ship it to me in New York, and I'll sell them in New York. And I think there's enough GIs coming back from Europe that appreciate sports cars that have the money that I can get them to buy the Ferraris. And it became very successful yes. introducing Ferrari to America, and, and that's what Ferrari did. So the, the odd number cars were street cars, the even number cars were race cars, and up until the early 60s when they got started building so many production street cars. But this is a NART Spider, um, which is, uh, can, can anyone to build a, an open top version of the, of the 275 GTV? And Enzo was against it, this is 1967, he said, with all the Ralph Nader and everything going on, convertibles are not going to be popular and because of safety, and so I, I won't build them. And he said, well, I would like the North American racing team to do it. And he said, okay, but you can't call them Ferrari. And so he went to um, Pininfarina and got the coupes and then took them to Scaglietti to cut the tops off and turn them into spiders in a final assembly and bring them over. And he was paying, I think, about $8,000 a piece and selling them for 14000 And the last one he built um, was for, one of the last ones was for Eddie Smith in, in Lexington, North Carolina, who had developed a mail order catalog for women's clothing and become a millionaire. And he had met uh, Luigi Canetti at Sebring. And he couldn't sell, he couldn't sell the, the last one he had. Mm -hmm. So he called him up and said, I'll trade that coupe you bought for me last year for $1,000 and give you a spider. Okay. And he did. And that car sold at Monterey for $27.5 million three years ago. Because his original owner, only one owner, the, the pedigree was impeccable. But this car um, is, is what we did. We found the 11th body when he stopped. He was ordered 25, but after 10, he couldn't sell them. So he said, stop. They'd already built the 11th body. Okay. And so we got the 11th body. Wow. And then we got all the, got, over 10 years, we got all the frame and engine and everything necessary to recreate, to create the, so that's, that is the, effectively the 11th 275 now. Yeah. Unreal. Yeah. yeah. The thing blows me away. It looks yes. incredible. Yeah, I mean, it's wonderful it, to drive. Yeah, I can only imagine. It's hard to beat a 275 coupe, but yep. something about that pretty impressive. And yeah, you're already moving on to probably what I would say is the next most impressive thing from my side. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, go on. And this is a replica of the P3, P4 Ferrari from 67. And uh, David Piper who I'm sure you know, he was very involved in building some replicas and got permission from Ferrari to do that. And you can see the tr translucent photograph that shows you the engine and what's under the body. But you say replica, it's a kind of almost a bit of an undersell, right? Because this is, could you say, the only official Ferrari replica in a way because David got that permission? Well, it's just got, yeah, it's, he, he endorsed it and, and you know, it's, it's very, very true to the original. And of course, Richie Atwood, and he raced it in uh, this in this configuration in South Africa okay. at Kalama. But uh, they uh, he he sends me emails. We email back and forth a lot. Oh, okay. He's got some great stories. And you see some photographs he sent me of cars. Always doing Super it. Cool. Totally. Yeah, an amazing thing to because yeah. I think am I right? And there's only one original left. Is that right? Of the, yeah, and that's suspect. Like that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This is. Uh, a 54 A6 GCS Maserati, and um, very lightweight aluminum body, strictly for racing, although it was used Mia Mia and things of that sort. Yeah, well, as I say, thank you, uh, thank you for talking us around. Sure. It's uh, pretty special to see all these cars in one place. <laughs> this year and the only negative I would say 
is how many owners celebrate delivery mileage cars while this guy has some of the rarest most desirable cars in the world and he's out here driving them all day every day it's glorious i get the feeling that not a lot of people on youtube are going to care about this or even know even know what i'm driving but i'm so tempted to to give up the supercars and to focus on this kind of stuff it's just so much fun and this is relatively yes i say relatively quick i would love to do the mila Amelia in something like this Right, so it's a very different uh, seating position as well. Yeah, um, that's the key. Push, pull that out for ignition. Yeah. Start, oh, put, it, put it in neutral. Put it in neutral. Foot on the brake. Whereas I'm trying to figure out all the pedals. Okay, there we go. Neutral, foot on the, fit is on the brake now, yeah. Now push the button. Okay. Bit of gas. Okay. Larry, will you go in front again so I can follow you? Well, from 196 horsepower to some 300 odd. Uh, trying to find first gear now. This thing is slightly more intimidating, I would say, than the, uh, than the Austin Healey definitely less comfortable, much less comfortable. I can hardly feel the pedals. It's a really narrow pedal box. But anyway, off we go. I'm worried my hat's not gonna stay on. Okay, we're moving. Well, that's a very different experience. <laughs> oh my God, completely different. Now, uh, should I try and leave it in gear or is there a Just leave it in gear. Just leave it in gear. Uh, oh, I don't know if I, am I gonna be able to? Oh, any gear. Yeah. There we go, any, any gear's a gear. <laughs> yeah, what a complete, that's a really lovely road car, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Very, this is a beast. Um, this is an all out race car. Though. Yeah, all out race car, yeah. I mean. <laughs> And so loud. I got in and I said like pretty quickly, I was like, I'm not gonna be able to talk to that camera. It was just kind of hold on. And it revs pretty high, huh? Yeah. <laughs> now, if it wasn't fairly obvious, I definitely enjoyed the Austin Healey a lot more than that Lister Jaguar. The Lister was just so intense. The Austin, a beautiful road car still, of course, quick for its day and still arguably, well, it's enjoyable to drive. The Lister just terrifying. I mean, everything about it was just loud and intense and hey, it's a race car. But anyway, you find me back inside the sort of collection and I've come over, of course, to the Ferraris because whilst this place is amazing and there are cars in here that just blow my mind, these three or maybe this row is just so special to me. Of course, I'm a huge Ferrari fan and the importance of some of these cars is huge. Larry did kind of touch on it, but that 275 is arguably the 11th 275 Nart Spider. I mean, that is Ferrari. That is what we, uh, what we know Ferrari today kind of came from that. So unbelievable to see and just created in the most beautiful way. Every element of it just crafted fantastically. But then this, the P3 P4 or P3 slash four. Uh, you may remember uh, sort of a month or so ago now, I drove a sort of Le Mans recreation, the 917-917 Porsche whilst I was in Kansas. And that was unreal, but that was very much a sort of replica. 
this is a recreation. This is for, like an official Ferrari recreation because David Piper, who was a racing driver, uh, when these cars all sort of burnt up and crashed, he said, look, can I build some more? He asked Enzo Ferrari, can I build some more? And Enzo went, yeah, sure. And so they are nearly as exact as you can get. And the deep, when you just start looking at it, it's just, <gasps> and one of the most identifiable liveries as well. So just that whole thing my heart but of course you guys know formula one that is my life that is my obsession to get close to a 60s formula one car at any point is incredible that one right there you got to think that none have survived from that era or from that year of racing they all crashed and caught fire but to take a model blow it up and then recreate a car based on a scale model how does the brain even compute that They've done such an insane job making that Ferrari 312, 312. I just, my heart bleeds for it. But yes, of course, we can't forget the 250 short wheelbase California Spider. But yes, it's been an unbelievable day here. I uh, didn't expect to drive stuff, so I've got to thank Larry hugely for that. But of course, for just inviting me down and giving me the tour. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. As I say, I, I, I didn't know how to do this place justice, but fingers crossed I have by just showing you as much as I can of what is here. Now, unfortunately, this is a private collection and it's not open to the public, but every now and again, Larry does throw open the doors to different members and clubs and student programs, etc. So you never know, you might find one day yourself getting invited to come and check this place out. And if you do, cancel everything and make sure you get here. I hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you have and make sure to subscribe for plenty more videos to come. Well, if there's if there's any car to start with, surely it's this because I feel like this this almost made you insta famous. <laughs> I, I feel like it did. It's one of the I feel like it's one of the most well known Wyras in existence. Well, uh, well in like hypercars even. I would yeah. put it in that in terms of like Instagram or social media at least. Yeah. Well, that's true. It was our first hypercar that 